Hello, this is CJ Hoyle. In this video, I'm going to give a narrated tour of Ontario Place from here in my kayak. All right, so I'm starting here from the east end of Bridgentine Cove, and I'm going to make my way along beside the East Island here towards the middle of Ontario Place. The East Island has a causeway which connects it to the mainland. That's what you can see back over that way. And so what Ontario Place is, is a set of three islands with a bunch of things that are built above the water. And these are all man-made islands. And Ontario Place opened back in 1971. It's celebrating its 50th year this year. And it was sort of an exhibition of sorts that was to be here all year round. The East Island is now home to a concert venue known as Echo Beach, which is just sort of over that way to our left. In the past though, Ontario Place's East Island had a children's amusement park that I remember coming to in my childhood. Over there straight ahead you can see a white tower above the land. It's kind of getting hidden behind this tree. It kind of looks like it's an observation deck, but it's actually was a platform where water slides used to start from. There are no water slides or any types of rides here of any sort anymore. Ontario Place was effectively closed in about 2011, 2012 time. But portions of it are still open. And it was recently announced just a few days ago what the plan for it is in the future. They're planning on reopening it again as it's gonna have a bunch of, many of the same things that it currently or used to have, including an amusement park as well as a, a concert venue. That bird over there you can see that's swimming in the water, that's called a red-necked grebe. You see those around Toronto's sheltered coves like this. You can see that there's a fair bit of wind today. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to come paddling here in the lagoons of Ontario Place because it is relatively sheltered from the wind. Lake Ontario is a very big lake, so on days when there's any amount of wind, really, the waves can get pretty big. You can see over there to my right, there's some people paddling in an inflatable kayak, as well as some people paddling in a paddle boat. There's a place in Ontario Place here where you can rent paddle boats, as well as kayaks, I believe. So we're just making our way out of Bridgentine Cove now, and Get a head underneath of this bridge here. And you can see on our right, we're going past someone in a outrigger canoe. And behind them, there's somebody stand up paddle boarding. So over here towards our right is Budweiser Stage, which used to be known as the Molson Amphitheater, and it's a concert venue. With quite a large capacity, it's an outdoor venue. And I'm actually gonna be paddling underneath of the bridges that go to it. The amphitheater, or the, the stage, is on its own island. It's the middle island of Ontario Place, and they're doing some crane work here. They're moving some stuff Beep. 
They're currently doing some work, bringing some stuff up to the amphitheater. I saw earlier the crane was lifting this big structure up on top of a platform. I'm not exactly sure what work they're doing, but they got a pretty big crane here to do it. So this is a place that you can really only ever see if you have a kayak or if you're in a kayak because larger boats can't really fit through here. I guess canoes and paddle boards could, but you wouldn't really be able to stand up paddle board because you have to be pretty short to be able to stand up to get underneath of some of these structures. It's quite a bit of seaweed growing in here. See, all these structures that we're going underneath of are bridges to get people to and from that concert venue. At the time that Ontario Place first opened, there was a concert venue in the same location, but it was called the Forum, and it was different to this. The Forum had a rotating stage that was in the middle of it, whereas the amphitheater is more of a sort of traditional outdoor concert venue. And here again, we've got a nice little cove that really it's limited to people paddling their own watercraft coming through here. It's quite shallow with lots of seaweed. Like you can see in here, there's like, even though it's windy, it's pretty sheltered from it and the water's like perfectly calm and still. This middle little floating thing to our right is, I believe it's something that's man-made there, but it's designed as a place where birds can nest. Earlier this year, I saw a swan or two swans, I guess, a family of swans that were nesting there. Another bridge to go underneath of. And there's some people in a paddle boat who are kind of blocking the channel up ahead. Hopefully I can still get past them. I think this cove is too small for paddle boats. You certainly wouldn't be able to make it all the way to the place where I came in. That's a very narrow gap there. Hello. So here you can see more of Ontario Place, including the elevated pods that are over there on the right. Those housed exhibits. They would just sort of change it up over the years to have different sort of exhibits for people to come and see, to have people returning to, to see different things. I'm just gonna make a left turn here and come underneath of this bridge. And we'll go out into the South Marina Ontario Place has two marinas. This is the bigger of the two, and we'll be seeing both of them in this video. But this is just a place where people who own boats can pay to store their boats throughout the year. You can see over on the left, we're gonna be going past a, a houseboat that's been all painted up.
and then just past there is the gas station for the marina. There's a blue boat there who's filling up their tank, I guess. And this marina here is sheltered by the hulls of yeah, I'll go on the left. This marina here is sheltered by the hulls of three old lake freighters, which they sank here to create a breakwater. That's what you can see straight ahead of us. That's the first of the three. I'll just sort of paddle out and around. And of course, straight ahead, that leads out into Lake Ontario and the land that's straight ahead is Toronto Islands. Earlier this summer I made a video where I paddled around the Toronto Islands starting from here at Ontario Place and going out that way towards Hanlon's Beach. I'm just going to turn back around though. Like I said it's a lot choppier out there in the lake. Although the wind today is actually coming from the north, which means that the northern shore of Lake Ontario, such as where Toronto is, should be more sheltered from it. But I still prefer to paddle in here in these coves on a windy day like today. Not necessarily because I don't feel safe paddling in big waves, but just because I enjoy more the calmer waters like this. So you can see more boats, lots of boats around here. Over there on the right, you can see the big giant golf ball, which is called the Sinosphere. And we'll be paddling right past that a little bit later on. This boat up here on the left has been decorated with Toronto sports memorabilia. On the left, there's a picture of Joe Carter hitting a home run and some Toronto Maple Leaf hockey fight. This boat's called Bar Open. And straight ahead, those trees that you can see are on another island, the third of the three islands. This one is called the West Island. So my plan is I'm gonna head back this way and get back over to the other side of the marina where I came in. And there's a bridge here that I need to go underneath of and it's going to be a pretty tight squeeze, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to make it under. I'm going to need to do the limo though. And there we're through. The first time I came paddling here, was actually my first time ever paddling this kayak back in late April. And back then there was no boats in the water. All the boats have been taken out for the winter and hadn't been put back in yet. So I had this whole place to myself, aside from a few other paddlers that I, I saw while I was out here, but no boats. And the water levels were actually lower then. So going underneath the things like that was a little bit easier. 
can see on this bridge up ahead that there are flags lining it. Looks like it's an alternating pattern of Canadian maple leaf flags and the Ontario provincial flag. Ontario Place is owned by the Ontario government. And so I guess it was, it was kind of originally opened as a, an exhibition. Uh, it was decided on kind of recently after the 1967 Montreal Expo, which was a, a real success and sort of really shone a bright light on the city of Montreal. And I think Ontario and the city of Toronto kind of wanted to do something similar. So they built Ontario Place to kind of be their version of an expo. And it's built very close to the Canadian National Exhibition, the CNE, which is just north of where we are. And then over the years, the, it sort of evolved into different things. It was, you know, it's a, sort of a, turned into an amusement park that was more for sort of children. So it had water slides and sort of kiddie rides and things like that. And I think it started to decline around the time that Canada's Wonderland opened. So they were kind of competing against each other and Ontario Place kind of over time you know, evolved more into being like Canada's Wonderland, but it never really was that successful as a project. So by, like I said, 2011, 2012, they decided to just close it and just sort of make a decision about what to do with it. And since then, it's sort of remained kind of closed, kind of open. In about 2017, they opened a, a park, they built a park in what used to be the parking lot for Ontario Place, which is back on the East Island, back near where we started, called Trillium Park. And when they opened that, at the same time, they also allowed people to come and, you know, just ride around or walk around the former grounds of the original Ontario Place. And since then, it's just sort of been functioning like a, like a park with various different things within it that have been open, like like paddle boat rentals, for example. And the Cinesphere over there, which I alluded to earlier, that was the very first permanent IMAX theater in the world. It showed movies and it still shows movies, or I guess it did before the pandemic. So it's kind of a unique movie theater. I'm just going to paddle around it now and head over this way. And just within this cove up here, this is where the rentals are for paddle boats. And I think they rent kayaks too. So if you're watching this video and saying, oh man, I want to go and kayak around Ontario Place, well, even if you don't have a kayak, you should be able to come down here and, and rent one. I don't know, you know, how long they're open for or anything like that. You'll have to do your own research, but this is the place straight ahead. So once again, straight ahead is the West Island. I guess over on our right is also the West Island. It's sort of a peninsula of it. And <laughs> When I say that the land on the right is a peninsula, you might think that I must be heading into a bay, or in other words, heading towards a, a dead end, but there's actually a culvert up ahead that it's possible to paddle through, which gets you 
across the peninsula. So that's where I'm planning on going and it's the first time that I saw this culvert, I was like, wow, you could actually go through that? <laughs> it just looks sort of mysterious and very dark. It looks like it goes on very far. You can see it, of course, straight ahead. That's the, the culvert that I was talking about. And it looks very pitch black in there. And that's because the culvert actually takes a turn. So you can't see straight through it. But it is still very dark inside there. So I have a flashlight that I'm gonna use so that you're still able to see things while we're in there. But because I'm not able to paddle and hold the flashlight or aim the flashlight at the same time, I'm gonna hold the flashlight in my mouth. Uh, so I'm not gonna be narrating for this section here. So let me just grab my flashlight, turn it on, and here we go. And who, and who knows what might be living in here? There we're out. I'm just gonna put my flashlight away. Now this kayak is not very good at staying straight. It's a whitewater kayak, so every time that I start stop paddling, my kayak will just keep on spinning and it will do a kind of a 180 anytime that I stop paddling. So that's what you just saw back there. Now straight ahead there is something interesting floating in the water. That's an art exhibit called Overflow. And flow is spelled F-L-O-E, as in iceberg flow. And this is, a, this is something that just been installed here earlier this year. And from this angle here, these objects that are floating here look like man-made things like a truck and a bunch of buildings. But if we paddle over to the other side of them and turn around, they're no longer buildings anymore and they're now more like icebergs. So it depends on what side you're looking at them from, what they look like. And those are made out of styrofoam, so they float on top of the water. Here you can see one of the bridges that connects the West Island back to the mainland. And this little tent here is a spot where you can rent jet skis to go and use out on the lake. And if we were to continue, I'm just gonna give you a quick preview of what it looks like looking over to the west from here. Straight ahead is the Exhibition Place, which is where the CNE, or Canadian National Exhibition, is held every year, as well as where BMO Field is. That's what that white structure is with the big roof over it. That's where the Toronto FC soccer team and the Toronto Argonauts play their games. But down this way, you can see that the West Island goes for a while further, but then after that, there's a breakwater, and that breakwater actually goes, I mean, there's a few little gaps in it, but otherwise it goes all the way to the Humber River Arch Bridge, which you can also see straight ahead. So that means if you wanted to paddle on a windy day, you know, somewhere where things are sheltered, you'd be able to paddle all the way along there. And I've done it myself, and it's, it's a good paddle almost five kilometers of, of sheltered area there between here and there. But I'm not gonna be going that way today because my focus is on Ontario Place and we'll head back through the North Marina back to towards where we started the video in Bridgentine Cove. And so from here you can see more of those pods which were for the exhibits of the Ontario Place. They're all sitting empty now as far as I know.
It looks like each of them has a pretty high ceiling with mezzanines inside of them. And here you can see more bridges that connect from the mainland over to the pods, over to the Sinosphere over there. And more kayakers coming towards me. The pods, as well as a lot of Ontario Place, is kind of deteriorating these days. There's a lot of rust that you can see on them. And I'm not sure whether the future plans for Ontario Place includes keeping those here. I wouldn't be surprised if they were going to remove them. There's a total of five different pods. And they were designed to be modular so that if they needed to in the future, they could have expanded and built more of them. And from what I understand, the original idea was just to have the pods. The pods were supposed to be what Ontario Place was. But they ended up building the islands because apparently building the islands meant that the pods could be made a lot less expensively because they didn't need to worry so much about wind and waves and things coming in contact with the foundations of the pods. Just got another bridge to go underneath of here. This one is relatively low, but not, not nearly as low as that other one that we saw earlier. And this here, these are the boats of the North Marina of Ontario Place here. It's much smaller than the other one. And I'm now heading back in the east direction back towards Bridgentine Cove and there you can see another good look at Budweiser stage. I imagine if you came here on an evening when there was a concert going on you'd have a you'd be able to hear most of it if you came paddling along here. Probably wouldn't be able to see the stage but you'd be able to enjoy the music at least. The new plans for what they're gonna transform this into in the future. Apparently they're gonna be building a new concert venue, which is partially indoor, partially outdoor. So the idea is that they can, you know, they can still hold concerts in parts of the year when it's not so warm outside, but then during the warmer months, I guess they can sort of open it up and have an outdoor venue as well, and perhaps also, you know, hold more people in its summer configuration. There you can see that crane is still working up there, bringing what it looks like a big concrete block up on top of there. Like I said before, when I was paddling past earlier, they had that big black structure elevated high above the ground and they were moving that over. When I came through here earlier, I also saw people up on top of those cranes that you can see, the red and blue cranes, and they were washing windows in the amphitheater. I'm guessing that because of the pandemic, they, they haven't held any concerts there since, you know, the summer of 2019. So I guess they must be reopening and doing some work to get it ready for that. All right, so back underneath of these bridges that I came under at the very beginning. And back into Bridgentine Cove. And this dock that's up here on the left 
This used to be where a big warship was docked. For many years, the warship was called the HMCS Haida, and by the time it was parked here, it was no longer you know, in, in active service in the military. It had already been retired, and they sort of kept it here as a, as sort of like a, a museum where people could walk around on it. And I remember coming here when I was relatively young. I remember when I was in Scouts, I was part of a, a weekend where there was a, a, a scout camp, or it was actually a cub camp, that, um, you're able to camp inside of Fort York, which is just north of here. And one of the activities that was for the kids to do was to come down and tour the HMCS Haida. And at the time it had already been decided that they were gonna be, uh, you know, moving the, the ship away from here. It was gonna have a new home in Hamilton, but they had built Ontario Place kind of around it being here, and at the time there was really no way for it to get out of this cove. So I remember them explaining how, you know, it, it was only like, you know, months or weeks away when I saw it from when it was going to be moved. And they were sort of pointing, oh, we're going to be, you know, demolishing that concrete over there so that we can get out of here. And I, I definitely remember that. Um, I don't remember exactly, I mean, now looking at it, I don't remember exactly where it would have gone out or, or how exactly it worked, but um, definitely a rem memory that I have. So you can see the Toronto skyline kind of straight ahead to our left and it's going to be heading back to where I started over here in the kind of east end of Bridgentine Cove. This is a place that I've launched my kayak from a handful of times. Over on the other side of this causeway between East Island and the mainland is a actual kayak canoe sort of paddleboard dock that's put there for people just doing like what I'm doing who want to get into the water. Now that dock is on the other side, so that will put you over on the, you know, the uh, east side of Ontario Place, which is great if you want to go over towards, you know, the Toronto Harbor. But you can also carry it over to this side and put in using these concrete docks that are over here on the, the right. But anyway, let me know what you thought of this video. I've made plenty of videos where I've gone on kayaking adventures and I've kind of done them more like a vlog where I'm taking the camera out every now and again and showing things. And I've made plenty of videos where I've done narration like this while riding a bike, but this is my first time ever doing something like this in a kayak. So I'm interested to hear what people think of this new format. The idea is that it should give you the experience to feel like you've now been here and done this activity. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.